Now, as web designers and designers, we should always be on the lookout for tools that streamline the whole process and ultimately makes us faster, more efficient, and more profitable. I recently released a video on using AI as a design assistant, but the tools that I used in that while relevant at the time, have come an awful long way, and a lot of other tools have come out alongside it. So today I want to revisit that topic and take a look at some of the tools that I think you should check out and see what they offer. Let's just call this our AI Design Assistant 2.0. Now, whether you love or hate Adobe, you can't deny that they have a massive suite of tools. And one of the new ones that they'll be releasing relatively soon is called Firefly. Now, Firefly is a creative generative AI tool. And that sounds really grand, but what it does is pretty cool. The first thing to note though, before we even dive into what this does, is that this is being trained on images that you don't have to worry about copyright. So images that are part of the Adobe Stock Library and other sources, and anybody that actually submits their images to be used as part of this will get compensated. Now this is Adobe, so we have no idea what kind of level of compensation, but at least this removes our worries as designers from the copyright problems that we have at the moment worrying about using these in any kind of commercial capacity. Now what I think is exciting about something like Firefly is its ability to not just create images, but also allow you to use it as an art tool with AI as the backing side of things. So if you wanted it to generate something, you could do that. However, you could also use it to customize images, to remove backgrounds, to introduce other art parts into it, to use it to create custom brushes and so much more. This is something that I think is incredibly exciting. I'm not an Adobe user anymore, but this is something that I really do think would be great to bring to more platforms and open up what you could do with a tool like Firefly if more tools like Affinity, for example, started to use this kind of technology. Pretty cool. Now I've signed up for the beta of this, so I wanna take a look at what this looks like. And as soon as I get access to Firefly, then I'm gonna show you exactly what it all works like. Ultimately, we should all be able to sign up for this as long as you've got an Adobe ID. You don't have to have a paid account, I don't believe. You should be able to get access to the beta. Now the final version, that's a different ballgame, but at least it would allow you to try it, test it and see what kinds of things you could do with Adobe Firefly. Now I'll put links to everything I'm talking about in the description below. So if you want to take a look at these things in more detail, by all means, check those links out and take a look. Now sticking with the big hitters out there, if you are a Microsoft user, you may have heard of Microsoft Designer. Now forget this to do with publish and all those kinds of bloody awful things with word art and clip art and all that kind of junk. Designer is an AI based version of a simplified kind of version of Canva. It's a design tool that allows you to use AI to create and generate various different types of media. This connects up to DALI to create the images if you don't want to use your own, so you get the AI side of things there. Personally, in my brief testing, I found the DALI side of things just to be a little bit poor. I think there are better platforms out there like Mid Journey, like Leonardo and those types of tools. DALI still has a long way to go, I think, to come in line with any of those kinds of tools like using Stable Diffusion and those types of things. So what you basically have is we're using the Designer Copilot, which is another AI-based kind of platform that Microsoft are pushing forward, the Copilot side of things. And you can kind of use this to create your own images, upload and so on. So you kind of give it information or you start from blank and then you can kind of go through the iterative process of designing things. Now in my very brief testing of Designer from Microsoft, I haven't found it to be that inspiring. I haven't found the AI to be that powerful or that good but it is still early days, it is still a beta product, this isn't a final release. So it is interesting to see where this is going and it's nice if you wanna use this as a source of inspiration, you can do that. I would recommend signing up for it. It took a couple of weeks before I got access to it. Sign up for it, test it out and see what you think. Cool things are you can have brand kits inside here. So if you come from something like Canva where you've used that, you could use it inside here. And then like I said, the integration to AI is interesting and we'll have to see how this develops. Considering that they're using, you've got Bing Chat, and that's gonna start bringing image creation as part of that, that's currently, I think, in beta version. Microsoft are really going all in on what can be done using AI as part of their platform for searching, for asking questions, for image creation, for design, those types of things. It's interesting to see where this is going. Now, the third of our big hitters is, well, let's be honest about it, we know Google's gonna get in on the game, and Google are, 
soon to be releasing Bard. Now you can sign up for this at bard.google.com. Again, links in the description. I'm still on the waiting list and apparently this is only for the US and the UK currently for the beta testing. So a bit interesting to see how this is gonna work. So this is again using that kind of large language model. I get the feeling this is gonna be very similar to what they're doing with Bing Chat from Microsoft. And let's be honest about it, Google were never gonna stay behind. And let's hope this actually is a good platform for using AI for our searches and changing the way in which we search and look for content and ultimately create content. As soon as I get access to this, I'll create a video on this to demonstrate what could be done with Bard from Google. Now let's be honest, most of the attention when it comes to creating AI images has come from things like Dali and from Midjourney, two platforms that have kind of got huge amounts of press. But I've been testing out Leonardo.ai, which again, I'm using the free version of this so you can sign up for the beta of this. You can get access to it. There's a paid plan or a couple of different paid plans. I'm not using those. This gives you, I think it's 150 credits per day to be able to create images in various different styles. And this is to me the next generation of what we're going to see with the tools like Firefly from Adobe with Leonardo, where we don't need to understand the complexities of the prompt. We get a much more straightforward interface where we can just put our basic prompt in and we can tweak and refine just by using checkboxes, using styles and so on to get started. Let me quickly show what I'm talking about. This is the interface that you get. Now, what we're seeing at the moment is the kind of homepage where we've got recent creations, but you'll notice if we take a look across the top, these are the featured models and these are the styles of images you can create. So again, this removes that kind of prompt recognition and understanding. If you want something to be a vintage style photograph or you want it to be in a paper art style or any of the other options that are available here, you can simply choose those from the list and then you can use those as the starting point. So for example, we might want to use this deliberate 1.1. We can generate with this model. You can see I've already created some different recent generations and you can see we've got prompt generation. So we can come in and we can start typing in the prompt. You can see we can type what we want. We've got the model that we're using, in this case, deliberate 1.1, but we can change this to any of the other options inside here. You can see we can choose different styles. We can use negative prompts, prompt magic, the number of images you want to generate. And then on the left-hand side, we can choose the image dimensions and different things will cost different kind of credits. You can see at the moment, I've got 150 credits. If I want to upgrade, I can jump in and you can see we've got up to a maestro kind of option where you can pay monthly or annually depending upon what you want to do. For me, I'm quite happy with the whole free tier. It gives me more than enough to get started and play around with it. Once you're ready, you can go ahead and start typing in. And like I say, you can fine tune and refine this, set your aspect ratio, all those types of things can be done inside this without needing to manually do this like you would with Mid Journey. And then once you're happy with the prompt you want to put in, you simply hit generate. It tells you the number of tokens that are going to be used. This will then go ahead and start creating based upon the prompt that I've put in. The one thing I really like about Leonardo is the upscaling. It gives incredible results. You can see this is what we start off with. If we click to open it up, it already looks pretty good. It's using that style model that we've already selected, but now what I can do is I can go ahead and you can see I've got icons at the bottom. So I don't need to type anything in or mess around. I can just say, I want to upscale this. So I've got a couple of different types of upscaling. I'll choose the first one. That's gonna go ahead now in the background, do the upscaling for me, and we should then be able to see the difference between the original image and the upscaled version, which is generally dependent upon the type of art that you're creating, can be considerable. And I'll show you some examples once this one is finished. So this is our original image and we can just switch between the various different versions at the bottom. We'll change this now to the upscaled version. As you can see, it's sharper, it's more detailed, and it already looks considerably better. Now there are still some limitations we're going to see with tools like Leonardo or anything, and they are getting better. Hands, it doesn't really do hands very well. As you can see, my cyberpunk girl has five fingers and a thumb on her one hand. However, if you're not looking that closely, you can kind of get away with it. But you can see it's pretty cool. And if you find that you don't like the upscaling on that version, you've got a different upscaler, which is the alternative. So they say if you find you lose detail, you can choose the option to upscale using this alternative upscaler to get different versions and variations. So it's pretty cool what you can do. And if we take a look at some examples that I've been working on previously, you can see if we open this one up, this is the upscaled image. This is the original image. There's quite a considerable difference between the two. If we open this one up, this is the upscaled, there's the original, 
and this is the alternative upscaled image. So you can see it's kind of like a halfway house between the two of them. Now jumping over into Mid Journey, Mid Journey has recently gone up to version five and this again, removes a lot of the limitations and the issues we had. We get higher resolution. We now have 16 by nine as a default aspect ratio. There's a lot of different things inside you. You'll find when you create something, like for example, where I've created these kind of desolate uh, sort of cityscapes, when you then move over to upscaling, it's incredibly fast because it seems to be that it's creating the higher resolution images in the background at the same time it generates them originally. And then when you go ahead and you say you want to upscale it, it pretty much takes a second or two and that upscaled version is already there. So that's pretty cool. But again, I've been using Mid Journey now for quite some time and the results are getting so much better. Like this, for example, yeah, as you can probably tell, I'm kind of being inspired by The Last of Us at the moment, the end scene. If you haven't seen it, I'll give you no more, but there's giraffes in it. But you can see the image itself comes out looking really, really good. You want to open it in a browser to get a higher resolution version, you can do that. And then once I'm happy with the image, I'll use a tool like Pixelmator Pro to super resolution this. And that does an incredibly good job, depending upon the type of image. But you can take these images, you can load them into something like that, like Pixelmator Pro, like Photoshop, any of those tools, upscale them, edit them to get the colors exactly as you want, and you can get some amazing end results. Perfect for different types of websites. Now again, speaking of websites, if you want to, you can easily use this as inspiration. So for example, I've gone ahead and done a couple of inspirations for different types of websites. You can see there's some examples that I've got. You can see this gives us a really nice looking clean design and we can then take that as inspiration and start to create it using a tool like Figma or Lunacy or any of those kinds of tools. We've got an abundance of options available to us to kind of get creative with these types of tools. And then for me, I've been using, which is a Mac only tool, but there are various different sort of versions of tools like this you can use. I've been using Freeform now to create kind of mood boards for projects that I'm working on or for fictitious projects for tutorials. So for example, creating a coffee shop, you can see these are some of the branding ideas that I've got. I can use these as starting points. Now the text is still way off what we need, but it gives you a great way of creating mockups that you could then hand off to a client to get feedback on your initial ideas without investing a huge amount of time creating all of these yourself from scratch. You can see if you come down, I've got some mockups inside you, again, giving me a good starting point to inspire me in how I wanna move things forward. So creating mood boards with tools like Freeform is a great way of being able to get together and have AI create some starting point ideas for you. Now I've been using ChatGPT for a very long time, well, relatively long time in AI. And I recently upgraded to the paid version to give me access to GPT version four, which is the latest language model for working with ChatGPT. So this improves what we have with the previous and the free version, which is ChatGPT 3.5. So once you get access to that, you can see you are limited to the number of kind of messages you can do, and this keeps on dropping. When I signed up for this probably about two weeks ago, it was 100 messages every three hours. Now it's down to 25 because the servers are probably getting hammered at this point in time. But that should still be enough to get your conversation started to kind of get an idea of what it's like working with it. Now for me, I use this to do things like, I'll take content that I've written for email marketing or for website ideas or for landing pages, and I'm not the best when it comes to marketing language. So what I'll do is I'll write out what I want to cover and then I'll use ChatGPT to refine that and change the tone of voice to give it a certain feel and to give consistency across whatever it is I'm creating. I found this is a really solid way and you don't have to worry then about copyright because it's literally taking what you've written and changing the tone of voice, changing the wording, changing the structure, but it's still ultimately your words that it uses. Now sticking with ChatGPT and large language models and so on, you probably tried using this to write code and maybe been a little bit disappointed with the end results. Why? Primarily because it's not trained on tools like WordPress. It's not trained specifically to write code. However, you may want to take a look at Code WP. This is using ChatGPT, I believe, as the kind of core, but this has been trained on WordPress. Now, I created a video on this very recently, which I'll link in the description below. I would recommend taking a look at that. It's going to cover it in a little bit more detail. But the free version allows you to kind of create PHP code. But if you want to pay for this, you can actually jump up and have it work with Elementor. You can have it work with WooCommerce, PHP, and all manner of different platforms. 
pretty exciting to see where this is going. Again, you do still need to have a basic understanding of the code to make sure that what's being spat out actually makes sense, it's secure, it's safe, and all those kinds of things. But if you are looking for a way of having code generated for you using WordPress and some of the tools that go with it, check out CodeWP. I think you might be excited to see where this is going. Now, before I wrap things up, I want to go back to ChatGPT, not specifically for that, but for something I came across recently. Now, I watched a video a little while back about prompt generation in ChatGPT. Now, you may be thinking, what the hell is that? Well, prompt generation or prompt generator allows you to take ChatGPT, put in some instructions, and then get it to ask you a series of questions that you can keep on answering for as long as you want. And each time you answer more of those questions, it will refine the prompt that it actually generates. And then you can use that to tailor make the response you want from a new chat in ChatGPT. Now, this might sound complicated, but let me just show you what I'm talking about. And I'll link to the original article to give credit to Brett Littlefield, the guy that actually wrote this out. Check it out for yourself and give it a try. So all you need to do is simply go ahead and copy this little block of text that I'm going to link in the description below. So we're going to copy that from there. We're going to head over into ChatGPT. We're going to drop this into the first part. This is going to be our first prompt. So you can see now, what would you like the prompt to be about? So it's asking us a question to give it information to start asking us more questions. So let's just say we want this on affiliate marketing. And we'll leave it at that. So now it comes back, first of all, with a prompt, a revised prompt. So this is the starting point for the whole conversation. It will then give us suggestions and then finally start asking us a couple of questions. Now, you don't need to answer all the questions. You can answer them with yes or no. You can give it as much detail as you want. You can answer them in any way and you can ignore them completely if you want to. But you can see it starts asking us questions. Are you looking for general information or specific strategies? So we can say, we we'll hit sort of return so we go to the next line. Do you want to focus on any particular platform or industry? Let's just say cosmetics. Because as you can tell, I wear lovely, lovely makeup. And then you say, are you interested in learning about specific tools or resources for affiliate marketing? For that, we'll just say no. So now we've answered those three questions. We'll hit enter. It will now go back and come back with a revised prompt. So you can see now the, the prompt is kind of being generated and expanded based upon the suggestions it comes back with and also the way in which we answer the questions. And then once we're happy, we can simply grab that revised prompt, start a new chat inside ChatGPT, use that prompt, and we should end up with a much better answer or series of answers or whatever it was actually asking it to output for us based upon this conversation with these questions, with these answers we are submitting. Pretty cool, and it does work really, really well. So I would highly recommend if you're a ChatGPT user, give this a try and see how it shapes the actual prompt you create and ultimately should give you better responses based upon that prompt using this answer sort of question and answer kind of process. And that's what I wanted to cover. This is just some of the tools that are out there right now and the things that are kind of growing. AI is moving at an incredible pace. And like I said at the beginning of the video, as designers, we need to keep on top of the tools that speed up our process, create good starting points and inspiration that we can use to get better at our job and ultimately become more profitable, more productive and faster at what we do. As always, though, I would love to get your feedback. Have you tested any of these tools? Do you have any tips or tricks that you want to share with everybody? Drop those in the comment section below. As always, all the links to everything I've covered are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.